Tuesday, November 21st, 2023, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at the petrodollar, and I've been talking about the petrodollar for over six years. I even have a petrodollar files. One of my uh, most viewed videos is about the petrodollar, and I've been warning that uh, it was going to take a while because the petrodollar has been around since the early 70s. So for other countries to challenge it, they would have to have a long-term plan. It wasn't going to happen overnight. And you can listen to all my videos. And that's what I talk about. But the punches keep coming. Uh, China and Saudi Arabia just announced a 50 billion yuan or $7 billion dollar a swap line for uh, non-oil trade. So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, before uh, I do, i like to thank uh, one of the viewers for getting me one of these. Uh, one ounce Silver Britannia from Gold Investments. Uh, I went up to London yesterday to meet Oliver to have a chat with him and he had that for me there. The other thing he told me that... Uh, my UK viewers will be interesting, interested to know, excuse me, is that uh, Gold Investments now, they can um, sip uh, or put your gold into a sip, which is a self-invested uh, uh, pension plan, a sip. And uh, there's only one condition, is that you need to have a financial advisor to refer you to Gold Investments. So, yes... If you're interested uh, in putting gold into your SIP and you haven't done it yet and you were, yeah, uh, have a chat with uh, Oliver Tempo. The other thing uh, that was nice to see is that Oliver's young son is helping out. <laughs> uh, I've seen him there a couple of times. So what? why is that important? Well, because it's been a, a family business since 1981. So... That means hopefully that uh, it will continue for many, many more decades. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is Millet. I made a video about Millet yesterday, and I've noticed there's a lot of people out there saying he's a weffer or he's a member of the World Economic Forum. Well, one thing I would say is that there is a picture of him uh, at a conference about 10 years ago in Panama, <laughs> World Economic Forum Conference for Latin American Economists. Um, I think the proof will be in the pudding. We, we need to wait until uh, January, uh, specifically the 16th to the 20th, to see if he attends uh, Davos this year. And if it does, uh, yeah, maybe we've been fooled again. Uh, the other thing... Uh, fallacy I think a, a lot of people are falling for and and that's because they don't listen to him and I've listened to him he does not want uh, to adopt the dollar because the dollar is a good currency because he he's read upon uh, Murray Rothbard uh, and a lot of people are just assuming he wants to uh, use the dollar as the currency but if you listen to him he, he wants to have no legal tender laws and he wants to allow people to use whatever money or currency they have. Of course, right now, the dollar is still the major reserve currency and it's still the default currency for a lot of Argentinians. So, yeah, let, let's wait and see about Millet. Uh, it would be great if, if he's really for real. If not... It's a shame, but it doesn't change our strategy of being our own central bankers and our strategy of becoming more and more self-reliant and hopefully not be reliant on, on the state. Hopefully, most of you aren't. And, and that's the best we can do, really. We, we can't really wait and always be hoping for Someone on a white horse, so to speak. Anyway, back to the petrodollar. As I said, uh, my uh, channel has uh, petrodollar files. 
Uh, one of my best videos uh, was uh, six years ago. It was entitled China Delivers Knockout Blow to Petrodollar Part 1. Got Part 2, Part 3. And I think I've got about 50 videos in the Petrodollar files. So it's not something that I'm just covering now. Uh, just to, to uh, let you know for the new viewers. And uh, the main reason why I'm covering the Petrodollar is not to bash the United States or the dollar but to warn Americans and the rest of the world, really, because the rest of the world's currencies are based on the dollar, if you go back to Bretton Woods. And I've been warning since six, seven years that this would lead to a loss of purchasing power, not just in the United States, but in the other countries like the UK, where I am. And uh, I have to admit, I've been right about that. Uh, we've seen a major loss of purchasing power of our currencies, especially in the last three years, and it's going to continue. And why is that? Well, because a lot of the countries in what's called the Global South or BRICS or BRICS Plus, uh, they want to move away uh, from the monopoly of the dollar, and there are many reasons why. Uh, one of them is sanctions. Uh, it, it didn't just start with the Ukraine war. It started uh, over about 10 years ago or even before. Uh, Americans started using uh, the dollar as a political weapon. So countries like China and Russia, well, they, they've been preparing and trying to build the infrastructure through uh, creating exchanges like the Shanghai Gold Exchange, Commodities Exchange, where you can trade um, oil, gold, and all of the commodities for you one, where you can get your you one, exchange it for gold. And uh, same thing uh, in Russia, they've been working with the Chinese to create payment systems. And again, I I'm not like praising anyone here. I I'm just trying to uh, tell you what's going on and how it will affect us. And it has been affecting us um, as our currencies lose value. Yes, six, seven years ago or eight years ago, even when I started this channel, gold was at 700 uh, pounds an ounce. Now it's at 1600. Uh, at the time, it was a uh, thousand and forty five uh, just when I started this channel in dollars. Now it's at almost two thousand. And that's how you have to measure currencies. And I would argue it's all because of this de-dollarization. And uh, yes, there are many out there who, you know, are still in denial, I, I would say. But uh, I I'm just going to keep plugging away and giving you my opinion. And the numbers don't, don't lie. And uh, I think um, it's going to continue. And last December, December 7th, uh, Pearl Harbor Day, 2022, we had a huge meeting between China and the Saudis, December 7th, 2022. Uh, and that was a very important uh, event for the petrodollar. The other one was back in uh, 2021, just a week or two after uh, the U.S. left Afghanistan the the Chinese no the Russians excuse me and the Saudis got together and signed a security cooperation agreement which is very key because uh, the petrodollar deal was that the U S would defend the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia militarily and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at the time the biggest oil producer the the uh, top dog in OPEC promised to always sell its oil in dollars. And why is that important? Well, because the United States had uh, dropped the gold standard or the gold backing of the dollar back in August, 5th, August of 1971, August 15th, when Richard Nixon closed the gold window. So they had to find a, a way to keep uh, the dollar in demand because <laughs> people were going to ask, you know, what's the dollar backed by? But if every country around the world had to pay for their oil 
And oil, of course, is the uh, lifeblood of the economy for energy. Uh, in dollars, they would need to earn dollars and there would be demand for dollars. And, and that's what kept the dollar going, even though it became a fiat currency, not backed by real money. Some people might argue that oil became money, but not really because oil is a, a commodity that is consumed. So, but, and that's why it, it, it was bound to fail in my opinion. And now Saudi Arabia is really aligning itself uh, with China and other countries. And they're still trading oil for dollars, but I, I, I think the writing is on the wall. And I've been warning, I said it, the shift would be like a, a super tanker tacking. It's not like a dinghy, it takes time, these things. Uh, so that was a, those two were very important events. Uh, the, the Russia, Saudi agreement in 2021, and, and then we had uh, China, um, Xi Jinping going to meet the, the Saudi uh, king in December of, uh, 7th of 2022. He also met, uh, they also arranged a meeting with all the other uh, oil exporting countries of that, that region. That was very important. And uh, just yesterday, though, there's another uh, big piece of big news related to that, to the uh, waning of the petrodollar, if you want to call it. And this came out on mainstream media, uh, Bloomberg. Uh, and it says Chinese Saudi central banks signed currency swap worth seven billion dollars. Three year swap deal is latest sign of growing bilateral ties. Mideast countries look to shift non-oil trade away from, from dollar. Um, I've got uh, this article here on archive.ph. Unfortunately, I, I can't uh, put a link to that on YouTube. They don't allow that. But uh, let's quickly go through it. And I'm going to put a link to the Bloomberg article in the description. Uh, and you might want to use archive.ph uh, unless you subscribe to uh, Bloomberg, which I don't. China and Saudi Arabia have signed a local currency swap agreement. Um, yes, the two countries' central banks have agreed on a three-year deal for a maximum of 50 billion yuan or 26 billion reals, according to their separate statements uh, on Monday. So they also point out that... Uh, they haven't done any trade in uh, yuan or real for oil, but I'm not too sure about that. Uh, I think that's going to be the next step. Uh, they wouldn't have gone uh, and met, you know, the Chinese met the Saudis uh, back in December of last year if that wasn't going to be the case. But I mean, Bloomberg is admitting here, um, you know, that uh, this is a trend. Uh, beyond a uh, dollar, it says here, Saudi Arabia is the world's largest oil exporter and the pillar of a petrodollar system established in the 1970s that relies on pricing crude exports in the U.S. currency while maintaining a, a peg to the dollar for decades. It's now also seeking to strengthen its relations with crucial trade uh, trading uh, partners Trade, trade partners, including China, as part of an effort to diversify the economy away from energy. So even if you uh, still price oil in dollars, but deal in it in your own currency, uh, there will be no dollar really trade. Dollar won't be used. Uh, it, it's just a convention. But eventually, I, I think... Um, Yes, uh, the yuan will be an important currency in terms of pricing uh, for oil. We'll probably we might have a yuan price of oil. Again, I think this is going to continue. There's no way to stop this. The movement is too big. I, I know Gaddafi and uh, Saddam Hussein tried to de-dollarize, but uh, uh, they were uh, lone wolves, so to speak. Now the whole world is. Uh, 
yet is moving away from it. Most of the, the, the world, except for the Western world. And I wouldn't be surprised if a country like France might join the BRICS one day. And uh, I was just reading that uh, there's a interest from 155 countries to have some kind of relationship with BRICS. And uh, again, <laughs> I see a lot of comments from, from people. Oh, uh, you're anti this, anti that. No, I'm just trying to observe and tell you how it's going to impact uh, your day-to-day -day life in terms of prices. And, and so that's why I, I think uh, the dollar, the pound, the euro, all the major Western currencies are going to continue to suffer from this. And by suffering, I mean we're going to require more and more cur currency to buy the basic necessities of life. Uh, and uh, yes, de-dollarization, it's picking up. So with that, let's quickly look at the markets. Uh, Rudy and I are early today because I need to go to the hospital to do hopefully my final checkup for my eye operation. It, it went really well. But uh, so it's uh, not even eight o'clock <laughs> London time. It's 7.52 a.m. So let's start with gold, of course. Uh, spot gold is trading at 19.92. So we're up $14. <laughs> I'm not too sure why, but uh, maybe it's because we're near the end of the month and there's a lot of shenanigans re relating to options expiry and... Uh, so, yeah, now that it's going to be a really quiet week because of Thanksgiving, um, maybe they, they're short covering their short positions, the bullion banks. Who knows? But, yeah, we're up 14 bucks. High's been 1994.50. The low's 1977. So we're up three quarters of a percent. Uh, silver is up uh, 24 cents or 1%. 2366 highs been 82 the low 38 Dow futures is down 25 Nasdaq down 6 S&P down 3 to the currencies uh sterling is up uh 0.15 of a percent at 125.24 the euro is up a tenth at 109.50 uh the dollar is down again versus the yen we're at 147.50 now down half a percent the other uh, currency that's doing really well, and here's a chart uh, of the dollar versus the Chinese yuan. Yep, it's down, the dollar's down another uh, half a percent. It's at 713. So um, it looks like we formed a double top, and it looks like the dollar index as well has topped. Um, do I think the dollar is going to collapse? No, <laughs> I think the dollar index could go down to 90 eventually and it would still be above its all time low from 2008. But that would uh, help, I, I think, gold and silver quite a bit. And I've spoken about this, of course, the dollar index, how actually gold has gone up 100 percent since 2008, while the dollar index has gone up 48 percent. So all we need to know is that the dollar, fiat dollar, and all fiat currencies are going to keep uh, sinking versus gold. And they take turn, turns to, uh, in, terms, in terms of relative drop against each other. So let's not forget the Aussie dollar. Uh, Aussie dollar is up a quarter of a percent, 65.70. Uh, the dollar is unchanged versus the loony 137.24 and the Kiwi dollar is up also half a percent at 60.65. Uh, commodities, uh, WTI crude is down uh, two thirds of a percent at 77.30. Uh, Brent is down the same at 81.83. Uh, platinum is down a couple of bucks trading around 920. And high-grade copper is relatively strong here. Um, we're almost uh, back up to 390. It's at 384. It's up slightly, but I, I guess it must have gone up quite a bit yesterday during the day. Uh, and uh, I noticed that the 10-year yield has dropped a bit overnight. It's down three basis points at 439. 
key level here will be 433. Are we uh, out of the woods for bonds? Is the bear market in bonds finished? Uh, I don't think I don't think so. <laughs> I think we're in a long-term bear market, and uh, just like in the bull market, there are uh, in the bull market there are corrections, like markets drop and then they rebound. And in the bear market, we have counter trend rallies. Uh, how far yields will go? I'm not too sure, but 433 is a key level. If it uh, goes through that level, we could still see bonds rally further. Um, yeah, and uh, that's it. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.